All right, good evening and welcome to tonight's TLC Eye Care webinar featuring Dr. Paul Ernest. Uh, because tonight's presentation is being recorded, uh, we will be muting attendees. However, tonight's presentation will be followed by a question and answer session. So if at any time you do have a question, please feel free to use the chat window found at the bottom of your GoToMeeting control panel on the right of your screen. You can type your question. I'll be monitoring the chat window and will forward questions to Dr. Ernest to address following the conclusion of the presentation. A downloadable version of this presentation will be made available on the TLC website. And if you have any questions that we weren't able to address this evening, please feel free to contact TLC Eye Care directly. Uh, tonight's presentation should last about 20 minutes to half an hour, and as I said, will be followed by the uh, question and answer session. So on behalf of TLC, I'd like to thank you for attending, and now I'll turn it over to Dr. Ernest. Uh, Dr. Ernest, whenever you're ready, please feel free to begin. Thanks, Chris, and good evening. Thank you for all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to listen to this presentation. I would like to talk about a new technology that is becoming a game changer for cataract surgery. It is called the LensX laser. The topics we're going to discuss tonight is, first of all, what is a cataract? How does it affect our vision? What's the difference between the LensX laser and traditional cataract surgery? What is LensX? Uh, we'll discuss the benefits of the, of the lens X laser used in cataract surgery. We'll also talk about different lens options. And finally, we'll talk about insurance coverage and out-of-pocket costs. A cataract is basically the clouding of the human lens. And everyone past the age of 50 will have some form of cataract formation. The indication for surgery is really two. The first indication is, is that the eye doctor has to be able to determine that the cataract is the primary source of a visual loss. We have to make sure that it's not due to retinal disease, optic nerve disease, not due to corneal disease or glaucoma, and that if the cataract is truly the reason for the loss of vision and it cannot be improved with a change in prescriptive lenses, that's, that's the first criteria. The second criteria is really up to the patient himself or herself. The patient has to determine that the quality of their vision is not meeting their expectations. And if the quality of the vision is such that they're bothered either by driving at night under bright sunlights or not seeing things as clearly as they wish to, and if both criteria are met, then the patient is a candidate for surgery. Uh, there's approximately 2 million cataract operations being performed each year. I personally perform in the neighborhood of 2,500 surgeries each year. Now, cataracts will affect your vision by basically having a blur to the image as it's trying to be placed on the retina. The best analogy is to take a camera. If you have the lens in your camera with varying degrees of grayness, the quality of the picture is going to be affected. If you look at the lower part of the screen, you'll see Normal vision on your left, early cataract in the middle, and extreme cataract changes on the right-hand side. The visions could be many things. They can be glare, loss of depth perception, halos around lights, difficulty reading or driving, and sometimes there could be no symptoms. These people can just feel that they need a change in their glasses, and they think the glasses are getting smudged, and really the smudge is internal, not external. Now, traditional cataract surgery involves making an opening through the capsule that surrounds the lens. Cleaning out the inside is demonstrated in the first part. And then after this capsular bag has been completely evacuated, place in a new lens. An analogy would be to take a red grape, and you have a very thin skin around the outside. And you're going to make a circular opening through the skin clean out the contents of the grape, and put a new lens back inside the skin. And this capsule is very much like a piece of saran wrap. It will shrink wrap around the lens and hold it in place. And that's basically what we do in cataract surgery. Now what LensX does is basically do it with much more precision. I use the LensX laser in three parts of the operation. That opening of the capsule 
is done with a more precise shape, size, and centration. Much better than any put anyone can do manually. Even though I've had the pleasure of taking care of over 65,000 patients, a laser will do a better job than I can do. It'd be the example of giving all of you a glass bowl and putting a piece of saran wrap on the top of it and asking you to tear a precise circle, both in size, shape, and centration. Now, even let each of you practice a thousand times. You know you can't do it consistently, but the laser can. So what the laser does is it takes certain steps of the procedure and does it with much more precision. And what we have as a surgeon is the ability to see this being performed in a 3D view and under real time. So we can place the opening, we can divide up the cataract into small pieces, and we can also do any relaxing decisions that we need to for the control of unwanted astigmatism. Now, this slide actually shows how accurate the laser is compared to manual techniques. And the purple line is what percent can we get within a quarter of a millimeter? And you see that it's a, literally 100% of the time. If you look at the gray line, as far as the manual technique, you'll see only about 10% of the openings are within a quarter of a millimeter. And then as you get larger, you'll find that really most of them are 3 quarters to 1 millimeter off from the desired size. Now, why is this important? When you place the lens inside this capsular bag, and it shrink wraps around the lens, there's a certain amount of it that overlaps the surface. If this overlap is not exactly the same, all 360 degrees, you get uneven forces. And these uneven forces will cause the lens to either shift or have a slight tilt. And this takes away from the optical properties of the lens it's designed to deliver. And in certain lenses, which I'll talk about in a little bit, it actually can cause side effects. So this is one of the key advantages of the laser, is this precise opening. Now, the other thing that the laser will do is it will pre-treat the center of the cataract. In other words, the contents inside. It will divide it into multiple pieces. As this slide says, it softens it. So the energy it takes to clean out the inside is about half of what it would be if we didn't pretreat the cataract. This is important in patients who have extremely dense cataracts. The analogy would be an M&M candy with a peanut center. If your goal was to break up the peanut center without damaging the candy shell, you would rely on the milk chocolate layer to act as a buffer. But in advanced cataracts, it's an M&M candy with all peanut and no milk chocolate. So the risk of the candy shell is much greater if you try to manually break up the peanut center. But if the laser does it for you, then it does it with a higher degree of safety. And lastly, it takes the front of the eye, in the case of astigmatism, where it's shaped a little more football-like and less baseball-like, and make precise incisions that will alter the curvature from that of a football to that of a baseball. And this will give a much sharper level of vision for the patient. The slide that you're looking at shows the placement of the lens back in the, in the position where the human lens was removed. Now we have currently three types of lenses that we use in cataract surgery. The most commonly used lens is the monofocal lens. Monofocal, by definition, means one focal point. And this is designed to basically give people excellent distance vision with less dependency on glasses. Patients with this lens, when it's set for distance, will still need glasses for reading, and they'll need glasses for the computer, and they may have a small correction that they may wear when driving at night. But for the most part, they can do uh, sports activities like golf, tennis, bowling, they can watch television, they can go to a movie, they can work outside in the yard, they can look out the window, and they can do all of this with clear vision and no spectacles. The Restore lens is a multifocal lens. I jokingly refer to this lens as the cake and eat it too lens. 
It gives you the opportunity to see things at a distance, in the middle, and up close. This is accomplished with a series of very fine prisms. There's nine of them. And each prism has a thickness of 1 300th the thickness of one hair. So imagine that, taking one strand of hair, divided it into 300 parts, and placing it on the surface of a lens less than a quarter diopter in size. It's a true tribute to the manufacturing process. All these lenses are made in the United States. What's nice about this lens is it gives you these images in a very smooth transition without the choppiness that you get from multi-segment glasses, and you don't have to tilt your chin up and down like you do with multi-segment glasses. But because this lens is so highly sophisticated in the way it's made, it has to be as centered as, as humanly possible. You cannot have a tilt, and you cannot have a shift. If the lens has a slight tilt, you will get increase in flare off of those prisms. And if it has a slight shift, you will get ghost images. So I use this lens and the laser together. In fact, I will not do this, use this lens without the laser. The torque lens is an excellent lens that's designed to not only replace the cataract, but correct astigmatism. So for patients up to a certain level of astigmatism, they have a choice between the laser and the torque lens. And in those situations, I prefer the laser because of what it does for the centration of the implant. But if you get over a certain level of astigmatism, then the toric lens actually is preferred. And the results of this are phenomenal. <clears throat> Excuse me. The lens has been available for many years. And the toric lens takes patients with astigmatism and gives them the same quality of vision as people without astigmatism. So again, you can set it so they have excellent vision for distance and wear glasses primarily for reading or for the computer. So how much do these lenses cost? To begin with, most insurances in Medicare cover the initial consultation and the cataract surgery itself. That would not only include the surgeon's fee, but the facility fee and the anesthesia fee. Our charge for LensX is the lowest in the marketplace at $950 an eye. There was an article that came out not too long ago looking at 30 centers and the average cost for LensX was $1,350 an eye. When we use this with our multifocal lens, the combined cost is $2,200 an eye. When patients go to other places for just the restore lens alone, they're paying this much money and the laser is not included. In places that do include both the laser and the restore lens, the cost is at least $3,200 an eye. So the implant cost for something like a toric lens is $845 an eye. We purposely have kept our prices on the lower end for, for several reasons. One reason is I want to have as many patients that qualify for this technology be able to get it. And after all, we're located in rural Michigan, and the economic situation in the state is different than larger cities. We do have financing programs to help people uh, want to make payments over time, and we encourage them to use this option if they need to. At this time, I'm going to open up for questions from the group. We do have one question that's come in. Um, if you've had a LASIK eye surgery years ago and, and are diagnosed with a cataract, can LensX still be used? The question is, can you use LensX after a patient with previous LASIK? The answer is yes. The difficulty in doing cataract surgery on a patient after LASIK is the calculation of the power of the lens to be used. We can get very close to our targeted refractive error in an eye that has not undergone previous refractive surgery. But once the cornea has been altered through refractive surgery, the accuracy goes down. Uh, this is a very long consultation process, which I have with patients every day to basically discuss expectations. But definitely, 
you can use the LensX laser on a patient that's had LASIK. Are there any other questions? I'll actually unmute everyone. Uh, are there any other questions for Dr. Ernest this evening? Doesn't look to be the case. I will thank everybody for attending. And as I said, we will be making a copy of this webinar available on TLC's website in the very near future. Uh, if you do have any questions following the presentation, please feel free to contact TLC Care directly. And thank you very much for your time, and thank you for attending.